Welcome to another Light Reading Telecom Innovator video. This is where we are introducing you to some of the people and companies that are moving the global communications industry forward. Today, we're talking about private 5G and 5G networks uh, are, of course, a huge topic. Private networks are a huge topic, and now we're combining the two to have two huge topics <laughs> uh, rolled into one. Uh, my name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading, and I'm joined on the presentation today by Masam Mir from Cisco. Uh, Masam, uh, thanks for making the time to, to share your uh, thoughts with us today. Phil, thank you for having me. It's uh, great to see you again. So we've we've uh, uh, spoken before at uh, uh, light reading events, and um, you know we're talking about Cisco Private Five G. Um, let's start by discussing why a business should implement a private five G network. Uh, it's a great question, Phil. Maybe we should start with why five G first, right? It's it's a natural evolution on on wireless communication that you know post four G will have five G. 5G definitely comes with tremendous amount of foundational innovation. And this foundational innovation is going to provide us much more reliable, faster connectivity and broader coverage wherever we go. So this waiting on the net to show up is going to be a matter of the past. We're going to get more real-time interaction uh, over a cellular network. It's a huge potential and it has impact into intercommunication industry. But 5G actually comes with some amazing attribute that's purpose built for businesses. Let me give you some of those examples. Uh, in 4G networks today, uh, getting ultra reliable connectivity and super high speed real time interaction is a little hard. In 5G, it's going to unlock it. But most importantly, 5G has also been plumbed in design to not only support connection for people, but connection of things at very, very large scale. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about the digitization of our businesses in enterprises, almost all enterprises are going through this digital transformation. And when they think about digital transformation, it's not only the hybrid work where you think about any employee works from anywhere. It's about bringing equality for any type of worker, either a knowledge worker or non-knowledge worker can work in this new hybrid work. That means you have to bring people, things, and the space together. So when you think about this paradigm of providing the same type of reliability, productivity gain for all workers, regardless of where they work from, but providing the, this, this amazing capability for enterprises to accelerate their digitization journey, 5G is going to play a critical role. Now, 5G is not going to stand by its own. 5G is going to be an augmentation for enterprise. And this is where the private 5G comes into the picture. When you think about enterprises and businesses adopting 5G for their own usage, they have to find a continuum. They already have private networks. Your LAN network, your Wi-Fi network is a private network. You need to bring that network operation, identity management, security management, underneath the control of the enterprise. And this is where private 5G start to become very compelling and appealing for the enterprise. You get the value of the 5G technology, but you maintain your control as well as identity and security that is needed for business to thrive. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, thanks for, for linking that all together. Now, of course, when we're talking about, you know, different kinds of businesses and as you rightly point out, you know, the way people are working is evolving, the businesses themselves are evolving. Um, so there's probably different types of 5G networks too, or private 5G networks. So what are the different types of private 5G? And then why might one be better suited than the other, depending on the, the company? It's a great question. And, and maybe we try to categorize at some broad stroke. Uh, uh, if you think about or consider a 5G network for enterprises and building a private 5G networks, there are going to be some options in front of you. One option is you own everything. You have your own spectrum, you build your own environment, you fully own that full infrastructure tightly integrated with your existing LAN and the Wi-Fi infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is the most ideal case for enterprises. You have full control, but it also comes with affordability, accessibility, as well as ease of operation. 
that it is a new technology that you have to adopt and tightly integrate with existing workflow, right? It's ideal where you own the entire piece, but super important that you also think about tightly integrate with your existing workflow and identity and security management system. There's a second layer to it. Sometimes we would call it, it's a private network, but it's sort of virtual. And when you think about a private network, it is virtual, not necessarily everything can be fully owned or, or fully owned by the enterprise. Let's take an example that you might have your own radio systems providing 5G connectivity for your business, but you may not have access to the full spectrum. You may not own that full spectrum. It is a shared spectrum. And in those cases, service providers can bring their spectrum asset and leverage the spectrum effectively serving multiple enterprises with the same spectrum. Again, for enterprise consideration, you will always think about, yes, it is a shared infrastructure, but it is a virtual shared infrastructure, but it's still one, the control that I need for enterprise to maintain its compliance, maintain the security and the trust that I need to run my business. That is second category. There's a third category, oftentimes people will call it, it is private, but maybe it is a gray area where you can think that I need a private connection, uh, but I cannot really own all this complexity of 5G because maybe I need a network that covers the whole nation. In those cases, it can be used for private, but you're actually using a public network infrastructure. One such example, if you think about connected cars and the connected vehicles, the car maker wants their vehicle to be connected everywhere in 5G network, wherever they run and wherever they go. But in those cases, there's no car maker who can build a network that covers the whole nation. In those right. cases, you're going to work with service providers and they have interesting technologies with 5G slicing technologies and so forth. They can also offer you that service. So all these choices comes into the picture. I think the key for enterprise consideration is how do I leverage this technology without adding more operational complexity and I'm going to choose my path based on what is accessible to me, what is available to me, most importantly, how much control I want. Okay. And well, let me get, let me kind of delve, you know, uh, delve into that uh, part a little bit more. So if a company has decided straight away, okay, we're not going to build our own private 5G network. We don't have the right staff. We don't have enough money. It, takes, like you said, technical expertise to pull this off. Um, we want the benefits of private 5G, but we don't want to have to run and maintain the network entirely by ourselves. What, what, are, what are my options for, for that? Uh, how, how can they get the benefit of the private 5G network without having to do everything uh, by themselves? Uh, I would actually draw a parallel. It is not only private 5G, we believe for enterprises, this is entire infrastructure in the uh, in the future. Your mm -hmm. infrastructure, your cloud infrastructure, your compute infrastructure, your storage infrastructure, application infrastructure, you name it. That when right. you want to move fast as a business and you want to adopt technology much faster, get to the outcome faster without going through a continuous learning curve of the new technology, the best model for enterprise to consume it as a service. So you should be looking at who can provide you these newer technologies as a service, but it's pre-integrated with the operating environment that we have. That is the best choice for enterprises because you don't have to go through this continuous learning curve of the new technology, but you're going to get to the outcome faster. Again, there's a second element for enterprise to consider, the economic value that you extract and the investment that you have to make. With almost all the new technology, there's always this upfront investment that enterprise needs to make till you get to the end result. We all should think about what is the best option for me with minimum upfront investment. I can get to my business result faster. We also believe a, as a service model, like network as a service, storage as a service, now 5G as a service is the most compelling option for enterprise to adopt this new technology and reap the benefit of the technology. Okay, that makes sense. Now. If I'm a business and I'm looking at all my connectivity options, I might say, okay, private 5G networks sound great, but I already have enterprise Wi-Fi and I spent 
a lot of money and it's 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 here and that sort of thing. So does one necessarily go away when the other shows up, or how do I um, how do I think about that that issue of of having already having enterprise Wi-Fi and now you know you've got the private five G network and its advantages um, you know knocking on the door so to speak. So let me answer it this way: that uh, wireless in enterprise is given. All enterprise of any size runs on wireless infrastructure too. Mm -hmm. It is pervasive. We don't even ask that question. It is wireless. And that wireless is Wi-Fi everywhere. And Wi-Fi is evolving very rapidly. We're, uh, right now, enterprises are deploying Wi-Fi 6 and then coming Wi-Fi 6E. So that will continue to rise and it will continue to grow. Usage of Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E in enterprise is going to get even more pervasive. 5G is going to come as an augmentation to the wireless network that enterprises has today. So 5G is not a replacement, it is an augmentation. Okay. And why this augmentation, I'll just give you one example, why this augmentation is going to become very compelling. Today, if you think about most of the enterprises using wireless technologies, you're connecting people and maybe some things. But I started my conversation about the future of work and productivity is bringing space, things, people, all together in a fully digital environment. And regardless of the location, you want to get to the same outcome. That means sometimes you will need extremely reliable, super fast, and super low latency connectivity. Sometimes you will need very wide coverage. Sometimes you will need a lot of density. So when you think about these needs of the future for full digitization of, of enterprises and allowing all workers, not only the knowledge workers, to participate in this new economy, they will look for this augmentation technology, not only the Wi-Fi, they will continue to grow their Wi-Fi footprint, but they will augment with 5G in the future. Okay. So, yeah, that makes so it is going to be an and, and when you do and build, also and cannot come with another silo operation especially right. when you think about identity management, security management, policy management, we cannot go and reinvent how we secure and build a trusted infrastructure. We have to plumb and introduce new technologies like 5G on top of Wi-Fi, maintaining the trust and the security and the operational simplicity that I already have. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, you're looking at layers of more investment, more uh, complexity and that sort of thing. Um, so let's talk about Cisco's role here and then we'll wrap up. Uh, uh, what is Cisco's role in private 5G and what does it do well in this space that enterprises should really think about? So look, you know, we have taken our time to deeply understand what is the outcome and the desired outcome of the enterprise. Uh, we did not start to just look into, this is the technology I'm going to go and fit this technology into enterprise working backward. We understand the enterprise outcome, where enterprise wants to go, the digitization and the acceleration of the digital businesses, we deeply understand it. Working backward from there, our approach to 5G for enterprise or private 5G is really bringing it as an augmentation to Wi-Fi. We will never approach any business where it is going to be a silo. It's always going to be designed and built to work hand in hand, seamlessly integrate with enterprise operation, number one. Number two, we are bringing our enterprise wireless expertise as well as market leadership. That knowledge, augmenting with 5G technology, that's what we are going to bring to market. The third, which is very unique, is you don't have to reimagine and reconsider your trust and the security and the policy in your enterprise. It is one, now on top of Wi-Fi and existing infrastructure, you introduce uh, 5G and we are best positioned to offer that, that, that the new technology introduction for enterprise. Last but not least, easing technology adoption with the burden of learning curve, getting outcome faster, it's the biggest value proposition we bring with our SaaS business model. It is going to be delivered as a service, just like what we have done for our other businesses. We have helped many enterprises to consume network as a service. Now, private 5G for 
from Cisco is also coming as a service to enterprise. And for enterprises who may not have access to the spectrum, they can count on us because we are partnering with service providers to bring a joint solution with service provider spectrum as well as that broad nationwide coverage to make this 5G available to enterprise of any size anywhere in the country. That sounds great. Okay, well, thank you so much for uh, Mesum for your uh, time and for the information today and for uh, giving us a, uh, an update on Cisco Private 5G. Bill, thank you so much for having me.